This is Eric. Texan born and bred, he's an American football fanatic, runs a trucking company, and has been a Republican all his life. 26-year-old career girl Catherine is a graduate of the Texas Christian University. She loves shopping and her two little dogs. David spent eight years serving his country in the Air Force. He's proud to be an American, owns 17 guns and likes a good steak. They all have one thing in common. They're part of a new wave of conservative white Americans who, like Yasmin, have abandoned their strict Christian upbringing for Islam. But is it really possible to be both a Texan and a Muslim? On the Day of Judgment, after all of the believers go to the Paradise, there will be some that get to sit very close to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, at his river, al Qathir, And then there will be a group of them that are denied. And I want to be amongst the group that sits close to him. And those are the people uh, that follow the way he spent his life and the way that his companions uh, spent their life. And that's the way I want to live my life. Dallas, Texas. It's red, white and blue America, the home state of George Bush and proud of it. Go Mean Green. Uh. <laughs> Unbelievably, right here in the heartland of the USA, Bible-bashing conservatives are turning Muslim. <laughs> Eric is as Texan as they come. He was about to become a Baptist preacher when he converted to Islam. Reconciling Allah and America means white Muslims like Eric have to be resourceful. Even in the middle of the game, a man's got to pray when a man's got to pray. Since converting, Eric's never missed a call to prayer. Islam is everything I wanted Christianity to be. It's got such a, a magnetic attraction to it. It's a way of life that chooses to worship an unseen God through a process of daily living. Do you think you can be a Texan and a Muslim? <laughs> I reckon you could. Uh, a Texan Muslim. <laughs> that would be a funny combination, anyhow. <laughs> I'm very patriotic. I love this country. I was born American, raised American, die an American, but I'm a Muslim. Surprisingly, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the USA. Texas is home to some 400,000 Muslims. Eric's mother, Marianne, is a committed Baptist. She's never visited the mosque before. Eric's wife, Karen, also a convert, is on hand to show Marianne around. Very scientific with this, just however you're comfortable. Can you say, Salaam Alaikum? Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum. That's good. Do you want to keep up with your keys for me? Eric converted 14 years ago without telling his mum. When he broke the news, Marianne, like many of the convert's parents, found it impossible to accept. When he told us that he was Muslim, it was the most disheartening news that Bill and I had ever received from our son. He could, I think he could have told me anything but that. <laughs> mm, 
I've often wondered if I could, if I'd feel the same way if he told me he was gay, you know, if it would have been as devastating. Because we had never even heard of Muslim. Yeah, that's my little boy. Here he is in the fifth grade. Oh, he had the prettiest blue eyes. And there's his senior picture. I always thought that was a good one of him. I did the perm. He's going to come back to the Christian faith, believing in Jesus Christ as his personal savior. And I think once he does, he's going to be a dynamic preacher. Very, very dynamic. And I believe that. She's a wonderful woman. I, uh, I love her. And maybe someday she'll uh, uh, embrace Islam and be happy for all of us. Can you see that happening? Actually, I think there's a much greater chance of that happening than me becoming a Baptist minister. <laughs> Yasmin used to be Mindy. Raised by strict Southern Baptist parents, five years ago she decided to swap her business suit for a burqa. My life didn't have any meaning and I just couldn't figure out what my purpose was. When I found Islam, I realized that the purpose of everyone is to worship Allah. After converting, Yasmin arranged herself a husband and they now have three kids. She's so devoted to Islam, she follows the Quran to the letter, a guiding force in difficult times. I think that Islam is offering a new way of life to many people in America. And I think that it has the solution to a lot of prevailing evils in society. I mean, you know, there's a rape every minute, drug abuse, very high divorce rates adultery, fornication. All of these things are very destructive to the moral fiber of any society. Sisters, sisters, I have an announcement. Sister Marguerite, Sister Marguerite wants to take the Shahada. What? Allah Akbar. Let's make a circle. She's ready to accept Islam. Sisters, there's a, uh, there's a, there's a lady here. She's going to make Shahada. Allah Akbar. Talk beer! Talk beer! Okay, this come on! Marguerite. Marguerite. Go ahead and take it. We'll join the salon. She's going to become Muslim. Say, Ashhadu. Ashhadu. There's no God but Allah. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Every time somebody embraces Islam, subhanAllah, it just always reminds me of when I took the shahada myself. And it's just very um, emotional for most people. And I'm just happy and I hope that Allah guides her to the straight path and gives her the knowledge of this deen and success in this life and the next life. Caddo Mills is a one-horse town on Route 66. It's got one gas station, one grocery store, six churches, and one white Muslim, David. Islam emphasizes a lot of the same ideals that this country was actually founded on. Ideals of individual rights for all people, equality under the law. I would say that being a Muslim has helped me to better appreciate the values on which the country was founded, and I think to a certain extent the country has forgotten. At this point I couldn't actually even conceive of not being Muslim. I think uh, it would, it, it's kind of like the idea of thinking about, you know, not breathing. There's a lot of pressure to not convert to Islam. 
But on the other hand, there's always been an undercurrent in American popular culture of supporting the underdog or uh, you know, not going with the herd. There's plenty of people still in this country that are willing to say, well, I believe this is true and I'm going to go with that, you know, and if anybody doesn't like it, well, nuts to them. Like the other white converts, David actually thinks being Muslim makes him a better American. With his wife Najma and their two daughters, he's living his version of the American dream. Life without pickles is just... But is it tough being the only Muslim family in town? Do people look at us? Yeah, they do. Um, it's so common now that I really hardly even notice it. Um, we actually get stared at by on, on all sides. When we're in the larger non-Muslim society, uh, people stare at my wife or my daughter because they're wearing the hijab, and then they realize they're with that. Hey, they're with that blonde white American guy. Well, what's up with that? So they, you know, they after then they're instead of staring at them, they start staring at me, and then they start staring at all of us. Uh, and it kind of goes the other way in the Muslim community. You know, here's this blonde white guy, and you know, well, who's he? <gasps> He's with her. Well, what's going on there? So we kind of get uh, stared stared at from all sides. But uh, most people are pretty polite about it. You know, they try not to stare. People out here, if anything, are uh, more tolerant than the people in the city. The stereotype of the, you know, the southern bigot is really pretty unfair. Thank you. 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 Texans might be tolerant, but it's still a hugely religious state. Surely Bible bashers wouldn't let Christians turn Muslim without putting up a fight. 253 vans going to Claremore, Oklahoma. Eric runs his trucking company in downtown Dallas. Is Marianne out there? He's a Muslim lone ranger in an office full of Christians. Marianne, Eric, looking for you. For Eric and right-hand man Ron, every day at the office is a religious high noon. Uh -huh. Are you a Muslim? <laughs> No. <laughs> he, he will be. I'm the Christian side of this office. He's working on it. <laughs> Southwest. It's just the Christian side and it's the Muslim side. <laughs> Has Eric been, have you tried to convert you? Yes, yeah, several times. Everybody in we've, the office? We've had several big conversations. He's a preacher. I'm a minister, yeah. yeah. Access to we have more in common than Eric wishes to care. To, uh, no, I'm the one to that let told on him about. that we have more in common than he thinks. And no, he now agrees with We have me. more in common than he thinks. He just doesn't want to come to the Christian side. Oh, back home. I, back home would be been the Been there, done back that. Back home. He don't want to come back home. Been there, done that. He don't want to come back home. <clears throat> That's all right. He's coming back. He's coming back home. Islam is everything I wanted Christianity to be. Would, wouldn't you consider becoming a Muslim? Yes, but he probably when or would. Would he? No. <clears throat> you want to rephrase that? Try him again. Try him one more time. You ask him. Ron, is it possible that you could become a Muslim? Depending on how much money <laughs> you all have. No money. <laughs> no money. And you seem to have plenty of money. You got enough money, I'll become a Muslim. No, I'm not considering it. I'll wear him down. Fax that to this number, and then give me this back, that 516, which you can barely read. What did you know about Muslims before working with Eric? What do most people think? Terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> think you can be a Muslim and a Texan? Well, I don't know, because I don't know what their belief is, you know. Do they believe in God? Is that, do you know? I don't know anything about the Muslim religion, but I believe their God is Allah, if they call him Allah. <laughs> Since 9-11, mosques say they've seen more Americans convert to Islam than ever before. 9-11 was a tragedy. 9-11 should never have happened. 
whoever did 9-11 should be sent to hell with the worst of punishments. And I, was, I want to make sure before I go any further how serious we take 9-11 because 9-11 has turned into a blessing to the Muslim community. What has happened because of 9-11 is that people have gone out to actually buy a Quran. They want to actually start to understand Muslims and try to figure out why this behavior, why is this happening. People are learning more about Islam every day because of 9-11. And I don't think they're going into it to become Muslim because they like what they saw, but I think they want to understand what's going on, and as they do, they start to see the beauty of Islam. Catherine converted after 9-11. In fact, she's only been a Muslim for two weeks. She had a privileged Texas upbringing, private schools and tennis lessons, and now works in PR. I mean, it's a big change, you know? It's a change, and it will come step by step, and it's, uh, developing my spiritual um, ality will be the best. It will, it will come when that will come. Go ahead and get your water to your comfortable temperature. Wash your right hand first three times. Oops, I take this off. Yeah. Gotta take uh, your jewelry off so it can, uh, all the water can get all its areas. Okay. Right hand first three times, but so between your fingers as well. Catherine has signed up for Islam, but has she read the small print? Coaching her through the basics is Nadia from the mosque. Lesson one, washing before prayer. In Islam, um, it is important for a Muslim to help guide other Muslims uh, in, the, in the right path. And uh, women in, in the mosque uh, will go up to you and, and, you know, tell you, you need not to do this and this and this when you're, and it's only to help you and stuff. Like I came in, I was wearing toenail polish and fingernail polish, and basically when you do wudu, um, your purification of your body, um, you have to, you have to not have nail polish. That was one thing. So you can, the water can touch all parts of your body, and that was just another thing. And, uh, you know, but I still go get manicures and pedicures. I just don't get the polish. <laughs> Are you putting the bead below the target or on the target? On the target. Put it just a little bit below, because I think you're shooting a little high. David turned Muslim while he was in the Air Force. From the start, he insisted on doing things by the book. He got a matchmaker to arrange his marriage to Najma, his Moroccan wife. Najma was shocked to discover that David, the convert, was very particular about how a Muslim should behave. When I married him, he was so strict and so many different things. I had a really hard time accepting, he's telling me what to do. <laughs> I was raised as a Muslim, now he's telling me not to do certain stuff. And when we met, I wasn't wearing my scarf that time, and so... Uh, I start wearing my scarf. Well, it was, I, asked, I asked you before we got married. Yes, I said, no, I said I will like work on it. Yeah, I said I will work on it, but I wasn't expecting to start wearing right away. And uh, I wanted to wear the hijab. I wanted, well, I want to, I want to practice the religion properly. Um, you know, and uh, I think to a certain extent, maybe I was uh, a little too strict about things, yes. uh, simply because being new to it, I was uh, very zealous. It was I extremely like... strict. No, not extremely. No, I on. think so. Yeah, it was yeah. very, very strict. Yasmin, the convert, can spot a Muslim mistake at 20 paces. The women aren't praying shoulder to shoulder, so she makes it her business to set them straight. She believes American converts can have a clearer view of Islam than born Muslims. I'm not claiming myself to be better than a born Muslim, but basically because we're studying it for the first time ourselves and we're going straight to the books, we're learning the truth of it and we're able to know the truth from the false more than sometimes the, the born Muslims. I think that we have a unique opportunity to help the 
people that were born into the religion to maybe encourage them to go back to the fundamentals of Islam. Meanwhile, Catherine, the new recruit, is being instructed in the art of modesty. I'm not giving up my identity, I'm not giving up my personality, I'm still the same person inside. I'm just covering up um, the physical parts, you know. These are sleeve covers. When you put these on, oh, okay. they see they cover your arm and they're really pretty with the lace. See, I like the lace. Yeah. I, I personally do like the lace, just because it gives that little femininity right there. Your clothes are not supposed to be sheer. <laughs> And they're not supposed to be revealing. Right. And then whenever you do your arms up, of course it falls all the way down. And that's supposed to be covered. So that's why you oh, have these. Done. Okay. Okay. But you know, that's if you want to. That's right. if you feel like is the right time to do it. You don't have to necessarily. It's the good thing to do. It's good to be plain and simple, but then again, we're females and we want to uh, be, you know, dressed up or dressed down or you know, having some kind of coordination is just in our nature to do that. But besides modesty, there's something else on Catherine's mind. I'm not looking forward to my family finding out. But <laughs> How are you going to tell them? I don't know. I mean, like, um, <laughs> you know, like how they do in the movies. Hey, Mom, I'm a Muslim. Pass the peas, you know. <laughs> So if Texans can be Muslim, could America turn Muslim too? I think the only thing holding back millions more is education. I think America could be a, a Muslim country, and I think it would be a very good one if it did. Do you think George Bush would ever convert? Oh, I, I rather doubt it. I think it would be great if he did. I think, it would be, I think the world would be a lot better off if he did. Maybe we would back off of some of these rather ill-advised uh, imperial adventures overseas. I think in a lot of ways that Islam could save Americans from themselves. Uh, whether it'll happen or not, I don't know. I think that the American society should not be afraid of what would happen to their country if Muslims were to become the majority in America because I believe that would benefit America in so many ways. Hey, hey, you guys come here. What's this green leaf? Abdurrahman, Sissy, who made this leaf? Look, this, this is like an elephant. Who created this, Nene? Allah. Allah made this? What about this one? Who made this one? Allah, mashallah. Allah created everything, didn't he?